hope that this works. I guess. Be careful what we say here now. <laughs> yes. Do you, can you, you take? Uh, I don't see it. I don't Got see it. it. Is it? Okay. Uh, looks okay. All right. Um, all right. So that was that was one set of questions we had. Did I press? Did I press oh, okay. Do we have any other questions on last week's either the presentations? First, let's say on the presentations or what we or the homework. Does anybody have any questions on either one? Well, somewhere it said that we were always going to use a deviation of two for these no. classes. No, no. very. I thought I. Variation no, deviation of two. I thought it said that somewhere in here. Oh, uh, that's, we got I don't think that's sheet. right. But, that's okay, we may have, a, I'm, we're, okay, we wrote this, all right, over the years, and so we may have some problems in it, we may have to change it, but what, okay. show me where it says that, okay, I'll and I'll see if it. that, uh, I'm if pretty that's sure correct. that when you read that, I'm pretty sure that only pertained to certain exercises, not to all of us. Yes. Somewhere it says somewhere that we're going to use For most of the problems, there's in the back of your exercises, this there's is the a deviation chart. chart. Right. And then you also gave us this sheet, right? Yeah. Okay. This, is, this is a deviation chart. Okay. Okay. It's on the last page of your exercises. Okay. That's the one you're going to use for most of the exercises, unless it says something else? Well, yeah. that is true, but they don't have to use it because they are given all of the deviation. Because we don't require them to figure out how to do them, but we will show you how if you want to know. I see. So the deviation is given for each problem. That's right. Yeah. That's given on a chart. That's so you don't have to yeah, yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, it makes it a little okay. easier. If you want to know how to do it, you can ask. So the deviation, uh, Trudy, for each problem is where? It's in, the it's in that chart that I gave that I It's there. this handout. Oh, we have this little chart. handout that we it's got last yeah. week. Okay, that little handout has yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about using the deviation chart in the in the back here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Come on up here and talk. Did you find you don't have something that you need like? Uh, the speed especially. Look on your plotting, the plotting are, the, there's two pages for standards. Anything you need is on those. If you don't see it, it's still there on one of these pages. They got two pages. One had the plotting standards. Yeah. And the other had, all, it's like page two or three. It has a lot of assumptions that are made and you need to be familiar with those. You shouldn't have any question about those because in the in the examples if it's not given to you look there. Okay. Alright, so you're saying look here. That's one thing. They will pass two. Not one. They will pass that. And, and what's and the other they one? They will pass in the handout. And there's and this. Right? And then what else, Trudy? The there's two standards pages. The second one is in this. They're in just two different locations. It's this right here, and it tells you a lot of information mm -hmm. about how to round, not round. Mm -hmm. All right, that's page that. two yeah, of the navigation yeah, exercise. They got copies of those separate right. yeah, from the. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that has a lot of the assumptions in it. Yeah, All right. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions from last week?
So the question I think uh, that Trudy is bringing up is why does variation change depending on where you are in the world? Okay. So we're here in Lake St. Clair. Okay. The magnetic north pole, as we said before, is in a different spot than the north pole. Okay. So this is the true north pole, this is the magnetic north pole. They're in a different spot. As you can see, this angle between them, that's your variation, right? And now, currently, it's right around eight degrees for us. Okay. However, if I'm over in Seattle, Washington, right? Michigan, the shore, it goes over here. Over here in Seattle. Okay, here's Seattle, Washington. Right? That's northern United States. <laughs> so if you're over here and I draw a line down and then I draw a line here, you can see they're going to be closer together than these. Okay? I should draw them with a ruler, they would be clearer. But this, so this is going to be much smaller than eight degrees. It could be four degrees. Okay? I don't know. I don't know what the variation is over there. But it's going to be different. And if you're ever in Hawaii, right, it might actually be, you know, they might be the same. There might be no variation. Some place in the world, right, a line's going to go through both of these, and it's going to be no variation. Okay, so it depends where you are on the globe as to what the angle is between those two points. Yeah. If you're if you're on a line, <clears throat> let's say you make a, a line from where it says Lake St. Clair up to the magnetic north pole. Is the variation going to be the same anywhere, any geographic position along that line? Or will it change from north to south? Uh, it'll change line? from north to south. If I'm up here in Canada somewhere, right, then this angle is going to be different than this angle here. Okay. The closer you get to the North Pole, or excuse me, to the magnetic north, mm -hmm. the more that angle, the wider that angle is going to be. It wouldn't be the same. Actually, I've, I've done a fair amount of flying up there. That yeah. area in northern Canada is what they call AMU, Area of Magnetic Unreliability. Conventional compasses do not work up there. Really? So they have to go to a grid north. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Don't, don't go sailing up there. <laughs> 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 it's a little cold up here, too. I think, I think my homework was in the area of magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions before we move on? So we're going to go then and move on, um, and we're going to talk about line, line of position and fixes. Right, we're going to figure out we're going to how to figure out where we are on the lake. Okay, when you, all you have when you don't have a GPS, where are you on the lake? What did people do before GPS? How did they know? when they were on the lake, where they were. Is this in the book somewhere? Um, yeah, it should be in your navigation primer. Um, 25? 25? Um, 24 is where we're going to start. Okay. Thank you. Okay? All right. And we'll go from there. So this is that's what we're going to work on now is how to figure out where we are on the lake. 
right? And we use lines of position to do that, okay? A line of position is a line that's plotted through a point like a lighthouse or a buoy, okay? And your boat is located on that line, right? So if I'm standing on my boat and I see a buoy, all right, a line that runs from my boat through that buoy is called a line of position. And I'll show you how we, we get those. Um, they're plotted in true and labeled in magnetic like everything else. Okay. Uh, and we'll put the time on the top and the direction below the line. So this is an example of a line of position. All right. There's a light here called Miller Light. All you see is the L from Miller. Right? No. Why is that an L? I don't know. It's a light. This is the Miller Light. Oh, it has another name, too. Um, but from that Miller Light to the boat, we do a line of position. It also happens to run right through the buoy. Okay, and this is, this is called the South Buoy. Um, this is something worth being familiar with. You're, you're going to get very familiar with this. I wish I had a darker color. It worked. I guess I'm going to have to go with this. Um, all right, Jefferson Beach Marina is right here. Okay, that's the entrance to JBM. All right, and our our boats are usually right here. Okay, that's where our level two boats are. Okay, they're in they're in Jefferson Beach Marina, you know, at the, uh, at the dock. So. And you're going to need to, you're going to become very familiar with this. This is the north buoy, right? And this is the south buoy. Okay. And every time we leave JBM, we're either going to go out, going south, through, right across next to the south buoy, or we're going to go north around the north buoy. That, so every time you leave on the boat, you're going to do one of those two. Um, and this light, this is on the top of a apartment building. It's about, I don't know, 15 stories or so. And uh, you can see that light from almost anywhere on the lake. All right, so at night, um, that's how we find our way home. Okay. And it's called the Miller Light. Miller Light. Okay. Yeah, and you'll be able to see it on your chart too. Okay. Um, but one thing um, that we teach on the water, but since we've got this up, I'll show you. At night, it's hard to find this buoy. It's dark and it's small. It doesn't look small when you're right next to it, but when you're out on the lake looking for it, it's small. And so, but if you head at 286 magnetic towards Miller Light, you're gonna run into it. So that's, uh, that's one of the ways we find it. Right? We get on the, uh, the bearing of 286, the heading of 286, heading right towards Miller Light, and then you can find it. Doesn't it depend on where you are? No. no. As long as you're on the bearing, the line 286, no matter where you are, and you're, head, you're he heading towards Miller Light, now, if you're 286 not heading to Miller Light, okay, then yeah, you're somewhere else. You're not going to hit it. You have to be on 286 heading right towards the light. Yeah, but you could be down there at 13 heading towards the light. I'm sorry? No, no, no. We're, not at, we're at that latitude specifically. We have two fixed positions that we know. So we're not at a lower latitude. We're at, we're at this latitude. A lot of times we'll sail up this way until with a bearing we got something we'll teach you as a bearing compass. We'll, to our bearing compass says 286 to Miller Light. Then we'll turn and head right towards the light. Okay. Okay. Because if you're, yeah, because you've got to be on this line. Right? Okay. So you're putting yourself on that line. Yes, we put ourselves on that line. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So this is a line of position. Okay. But there are two down there that you don't want. What happened? Oh, okay. Right now, I understand. 
Right, this is a line of position. And when you write a line of position on your chart, you write the time on the top, okay? You put the bearing underneath, again, in magnetic, even though you draw it in shrewd. Okay. All right, that's the lower line. So a bearing, if that were a course, you'd have a C, right? Right, it? right, okay. right. It's not a course, it's a bearing, okay? Now, if we head on that, if we plan to go that way, it becomes a course. Okay. Yeah. Right now, it's just the bearing. We're just we're and shown in degrees. Correct. Magnetic. Okay. Yes. Yes. Plotted in degrees, true. Mm -hmm. Okay. You good. It's one line of position. So, so on a chart, bit. how do you find that that's 286? Um, I will show you. We have, we'll have a compass. You can use the compass on your boat. Yeah, but I mean on a chart. Ah. If you're looking ah. at, you don't have a compass. We'll go on. there. Okay. We'll, we'll go there. Yes. How do you find 286 on your chart? Right. Right. Gotcha. All right. We'll get there. All right. Um, what's wrong with you? All right, so a bearing, if you took that bearing from the boat's compass, if, in other words, if I'm on the boat and I'm heading, I'll go back here, and I'm heading here, I'm heading up this way, right? I'm heading north, all right? And I keep looking at, I have a, you know, I have my helm and then I have a compass, right? <coughs> and if I'm looking at my compass and I can see that it's about 286 on the compass, then I might turn towards it. All right, but that's how you, that's how I would read a bearing. A bearing is looking at some point on land or some object in the water and looking on your compass and seeing what the, what the uh, degrees the reading is on your compass, all right? So if my compass was reading uh, magnetic 286, now compass could be different from magnetic, right? Remember we learned about deviation, okay? <coughs> but it, in our case, since we don't have deviation on our boats, we don't account for it. Compass and magnetic are the same. But I would, I would look at that and I would say, yep, we're at about 286 now, so it's about time to turn. Okay? And that's a bearing. I took a bearing. All right. All right, so if you take a bearing with the boat's compass and... Even better now, huh? <laughs> they're subject. They're subject to deviation, okay, from the boat's electronics, right? Um, so for our problems, you're going to have to take into account deviation. If the problem states that uh, the bearing was taken from the boat's compass. Could you? Uh, I just fill it with water. I don't know. It says dry erase cleaner, but I think water will do. We'll do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a bearing taken from those companies, you have to consider deviation for our exercises. Okay. Uh, but um, if you're taking it um, with a hand, what we call a hand bearing compass, which is just the compass you hold in your hand. Okay. <laughs> hand bearing compass then um, you don't have to consider deviation, all right? And I have, if I kept it in my focus. This is a hand-bearing compass, okay? There are several types of hand-bearing compasses. This is one type. And this type, I can look, there's a little, a little window I can look through, and if I look at, if I look at Oleg in the back there, 
and look at the window, I can tell you that Oleg is at a bearing of 354, okay, by looking here. So this is a hand bearing compass. I'll pass it around. I do need it back. <coughs> and if you hold it like this, then you can decide to see what your latitude is. This is the No. Depending on how many fingers above the right. All right. So that's a bearing and a hand bearing compass. All right. So if we're on a course of 29 magnetics, this is our course here. Right? There's our boat. We're on a course of 29 magnetic. And we took a bearing off of the North buoy, GRFL 2 plus 1, right? We took a bearing off of that, all right? So, and our bearing was, what's it say here? Uh, the bearing, was a red 312 off of the boat's compass. Not off of the hand bearing, but off the boat's compass, the red 312. So we have to take into account a deviation here of three degrees west. So, if looking at my, my boat's compass, it said uh, it's 312 to the north buoy, then for deviation I would subtract 3, and that would make it 309 magnetic. Right? Difference between compass and magnetic is deviation. Right? So, so. Where'd you get the 3 west deviation? Uh, it was given to us here. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just given to us. Right. Um, again, that's where you need deviation charts, right? Okay. Um, okay, so it's 312, but then we corrected the 309. And then to, to plot true, we also have to subtract the variation of 8 degrees west. And so then we're back to 301 true. So you would plot it 301 true, and you would mark it as 309 magnetic. And the time that this bearing was taken was 1342. Okay. You good? All right. So that's taking a bearing on the north buoy. Now, if we took that bearing, same, same problem, but this time we took the bearing with the hand bearing compass, the math is the same, but we don't take into account deviation. Right? So um, the hand-bearing compass would read 309, because it doesn't have deviation, so it would read 309, OK? Uh, and then you subtract your 8 west and you're 301. So it's the exact same problem. This time, we just use the hand-bearing compass instead of the boat's compass. Slow me down. Stop me if you have a question. Now, one of the problems that I think it was Mike brought it up a little bit ago. Or how do you plot this on your chart? Okay, if I've got my chart and I know I just took a bearing, right? And I just took a bearing off of this. Well, I'm out here somewhere. I don't know where I am, right? I'm in the water. Do you have a question? I have a question about the last sentence on that slide where it says the direction is viewed from the boat toward the object. So we are you talking about that you were holding a handheld compass and you turned towards the object? Exactly. Okay. I'm on the boat. That's how you take a bearing. You're on right. the boat. Yep. You have that hand bearing compass, and I'm looking at the object, and I read the degrees. Right. But if you were looking at the boat compass, the boat is heading in this direction, but you're standing here looking over in that direction. Right. But if I'm looking at the boat compass, I'm trying to look at where okay. that object is lined up with what degree, it, not, the, not the heading, I'm looking at what degree on that compass, okay, it lines up with that. It's kind of an, you know, an eyeballing, right. okay. okay, and it's, it's much more accurate with a hand-bearing compass. Yeah. Okay. Good? Okay. Um, all right, so, but now, okay, I'm on the boat, I'm out here, and I read, uh, with the hand-bearing compass, I read uh, 309 magnetic, right? And I want to plot it on my chart, right? I want to draw a line that's true 301, right? 301, true, and I want it to go through there. Now, 
the easiest way to do that is to start here and draw the line. Okay. But to draw the line from here, I wouldn't draw it at 301 because that would take it up that way. Right. It would keep going that direction with my line. I want my line to go this direction, so I do the reciprocal of 301. All right. So I go halfway around the compass from 301. Subtract 180. All right, that's called the reciprocal. Okay. All right. If my bearing to the light was 290 degrees true, all right, I'd place the plotter on the object, but I would plot the reciprocal. I'd plot 110. Okay. So, in this situation, here's 290, right? The reciprocal is 180 degrees around. It's over here at 110. So that's how you plot. You start at the object, okay? You start at the object and you draw a line just to reciprocal. I wonder if the question might have been, I mean, if that, everything you say makes sense. I wonder if the question might have been, once you know that, once you know your reciprocal, how do you draw it? Actually, how do you, do you you're going to use your plotting tool, you're going to use your protractor, you're going to line it up, you know, at, at the origin. I think the question might have been kind of how do you use a protractor kind of question, rather than once, once, rather than how, you see what I mean? Yeah. So um, that, that's hard to do on the screen, but. Yeah, is that the question? Is, is are we having a challenge yeah. using the? I believe that's what he's saying. Is that basically how do you use this? Okay. To yeah. actually do a plot that on the map. All right. Um, Grab a protractor. All right. We're going to. Uh, we're going to use that. <coughs> ah, lots of water now. Okay, so we've got, did I lose, I lost one of these already? No. Is this one up? No. Is the brown one oh, next to the Kleenex box? Oh, there's on the box. top of the board on the left, there's here. one mark. <coughs> there's one the right ball. here. Yeah. Look up there's the brown one. The board way up. Oh, oh, thank you. I didn't see those. All right, hopefully they work. Yeah. All right. On our chart, line of latitude, right, and line of longitude. Okay, longitude. I always say that wrong. All right, and we have, a, let's say we have our buoy here. Okay. And can I borrow somebody's plotter? All right. So, if I'm using the outer scale, it says here, outer scale with meridians, inner scale with parallels, all right? So if I'm using a meridian, I'm using the outer scale on here. And I wanna draw at, I wanna draw a line at 110, okay? So, I'm going to place this center circle on the longitude line. I'm going to have it touching here, and I'm going to move it until I see 110 up here on the line. So now I've got 110 here, this is on the line, and I'm touching there. So now if I draw Ah. <laughs> All right, so if I draw a line here, okay, that's drawing the line at 110. Okay, so, and if I already had my course line out here, right, if I had my course line, then I would think I'm here, right? Because I drew a bearing to there, and I know I'm on this line, or I think I'm on that line, right? Okay, so I ought to be someplace right around here, okay? 
Is that good? And, okay, thank you. All right. Isn't this fun stuff? <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. On we go. So now we know how to draw a bearing line of position, right? Okay. And a reciprocal. Now, a fix, okay, is when you're, you figure out where you are in the water, basically. That's a fix, okay? Um, a two bearing fix is going to be more accurate than me just drawing that one line like I we're going to draw two lines, all right? It's a two-bearing fix instead of just one bearing. And it's going to be a good bit more accurate than me just drawing one line. Okay. Um, all right, if two lines of, uh, as it says here, if two lines of position intersect, the observer must be at the intersection. All right. And again, how do you label it? Um, you write the time horizontally, and you put a small circle around where they cross, two lines. So this is an example. Okay. Here we have uh, two lines of position, right? All right. One to this lighthouse and one to this buoy. Okay. And where they cross, that's where we must go. And you mark the time here. Make sense? So we've been on the boat and we have one person stand up with the hand bearing compass. We pick out two objects, right? We have a second person who's going to write down things. And the person holding the hand bearing compass will look at the one, <coughs> read off the bearing, look at the other, read off the bearing. The other person is writing down those bearings. Right, converting them to true, and then putting them on the chart, and then you know where you are. Okay. We actually do this out on the water. That should be one of your fun problems to do out on the water. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, here's another example, right? This again, this is Jefferson Beach Marina, South Bowie and North Bowie. Uh, they took these, see, they took these at the same time, run right after the other. The closer in time you take them, the better off because your boat's moving, right? So you want to you get them as soon as you can together. All right, um, to make the two bearing fix as accurate as possible, you want to take the two bearings as close in time as possible. So, as I said, you may have one person take and call out the bearings while another person right records them. Right? And the angle of the, inter of the uh, intersection of the two lines of position affects the accuracy. Right? The closer they are to 90 degrees, uh, the more accurate it will be. Right? The closer those two lines of position are to 90 degrees, Right. the more accurate you're going to be. In fact, if they're too close together, you really can't trust them. You know, if you have two things that are very close together, it's not worth doing. Right. And as they say here, if, you, if it's less than 35 degrees between them, all right, you can uh, regard it with doubt because just a slight difference will move it up a lot. It will move the crossing point, the intersection a great deal. On 90 degrees, you're pretty good. Okay? 
All right. Uh, a couple other things that affect the accuracy. Uh, if it's a floating navigational aid like a buoy, right, um, it's going to be less accurate because they can move with wind and current. All right, they're not exactly where they are on the chart, depending on how much wind and current there is. Um, yeah, buoys taken with positions on land are going to be more accurate with objects on land. All right. We got a problem here. Get out your charts. Okay. Um, all right, at 545, using a hand bearing compass, you get the following reading. A reading on Miller Tower, this lat wall, and on minor light FLR 4S 16 foot, uh, five statute miles, two. Okay. Um, all right. That second point is north of JBM, up along the coast. It's a little hard to find. And I want to show you the answer. Um, there's the lat long of this minor light. Okay, so you can find it using the lat long. Okay. Find it. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 We'll talk about that yeah, in the block, okay. but the actual location is that black dot. Okay, so that's the new bearings on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just go north from JVM. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. here's your shoal. Here's JVM. Here's, here's JVL is right here. And this this is the light he's talking about. The light, the light of course, is the black dot right there. Yeah. Yeah. The location yeah, I just read the... <laughs> All right, so what I want to know is, so when that's you the Miller Tower. took these two bearings, where are you? What's that's the that's the Miller, Miller Tower. So your bearing is true is or right. Oh, so this is the minor. This is, this is, the, yeah, this is Miller these Tower. These are true. Right there. Oh, true? this is Miller Tower. That's, that's the minor. The locations of these okay. two Miller Tower are um, true. No, no, no. These um, are bearings up there. Each of them. So yes, there's two, 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 two. These are going to be yes. taken with a hand bearing compass. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the actual. That's the actual. The magnet. I actually have a question about that. Yes. You can say, well, is that it? Or is this a magnet? That's the tower. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I am. 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 I so these are magnetic. I thought I had the coolest dividers, but now I don't think I have the coolest dividers anymore. Now you have the coolest well, dividers. <laughs> Yeah, so this is, yeah, here's the one. 
Okay, so the boat, so the boat's out here somewhere. Yeah, and we're trying to use this to get the angle. Right? Right. So, we've got an angle of 2, 2, 2, Yeah. And this is 52 degrees. No. Oh, so magnetic. magnetic. Okay, so we might want to change it to true before we take our system. Okay, so I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, so at this point, Okay, so I am. I'm correcting the chat. Yeah, but you're correcting I just want to make sure before I unfold my map because I think I need to unfold my chart. Okay, so this this is on here. Okay. Forty-four degrees is on here. 
and I've got the Miller. Uh, no, you don't have 44 degrees. You've got 35. Oh, I see. Okay. 44. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. But now I have to go my charts actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll yeah. probably do because you got to get up to the Miller Tower. Well, this is Miller Tower right Oh, you got it on that side. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that'll Miller work. Tower is right so there. You can draw but the line just, there. But I'm just yeah. saying, I don't know how far it's That's probably going to be long enough. That's going to be long enough. I think so, because here's the other one. Okay. Right? So, and it's coming this way. Okay. So, we're probably going to cross right. pretty close. Okay. All right. So, there. Yep. Okay. 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 Oh, 
I mean, I could, but then I'm going to have to subtract. So I went from that to the edge of the map. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to finish it. Yeah, that's a very good question. I should change it. It doesn't mean that I'm going to do some trash. But you get the same one. I'll be in. Okay, I'm going to look at my chart. I'm going to change it. So we're going to go next year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that's the answer. I'm, I'm going to change this problem. It's way too small on the chart and too yeah. close together. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Um, this has been in the, in, the, in the presentation for years, but I'm going to change it for next year. Because it is pretty darn close. Everything's within. You need a magnifying glass. All right. Okay. Uh, I have one. I have one. Okay, so you got 52.4 and I got 52.5. All right, so yeah. if we move on. Okay, can, okay. can you go back just one second? I wanted to write down what you had for the sure. answer. Sure. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on to a uh, fix that's more accurate than the two bearing fix. And you're going to guess, right, why would this next one be more accurate? It's a three bearing fix. Um, so it's basically the same thing, except you're taking the bearing off of three points rather than two. 50% more fun. <laughs> That's right. All right. So with a three bearing fix, uh, the procedure is the same, and you kind of want the three things that you're using to be about 120 degrees apart from each other, right? So they're not too close together. Right? So you're looking for three things. Now, it's hard to find three things on one shore that are going to be that far apart. Sometimes we use the St. Clair Light, which is out in the middle of the lake, as one of the points. Okay, because then you can get the other two on land and they're really pretty far apart. An example here, uh, all three of them are not, that's not 120 degrees. Uh, this but is, you've got two different times. This is times. less than 90, and this is less than 90. So they're not as good as they could be. But it shows you the, uh, the example. Uh, and you end up with a triangle, typically. Okay, they typically, unless you're really, really lucky, they aren't going to all cross exactly together. You're going to end up with a little triangle, and you're in the middle of the triangle, basically. In the one, of, one of the times is labeled 1030, and then two of the times are labeled 1730. Yeah, that's, that's not good. I should all say 1730. Yeah. Okay. Just they should all say 1730. Because they should all have been taken right away. Yeah, if one was taken <laughs> seven, seven hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe that's your course. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come in. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. 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 You're going to run aground already. 
didn't so, did, did, did it quite so so why oh, the book says 1730, though. That's right. Oh, oh, the book has 1730. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is something I got to fix on the chart. All right. Well, there's a question in the back. Okay. Because if you're really lucky, the three lines intersect. Why wouldn't they intersect? Because you're just not that accurate. Okay, so, so it's an accuracy thing, not on the right. You need to interpolate. Okay. If you right. took perfect measurements, they would all pre converge. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There'll, there'll be an intersection, and the size of the triangle will probably show your accuracy exactly. and your plotting. Okay. Yeah. My or the size of the triangle the could be big because <laughs> there was a, a, a lapse of 30 seconds between when you took your bearings. And if, the, if your last one was right off the beam of your boat when you're traveling forward, well, that's the bearing that's going to change the fastest, right? That's right. at 90 degrees to your course. Right. So sometimes, you know, you want to take that one last, not first. You know what I mean? Right. So, so all right. That it'll, it'll, all right. Good. But all those things will affect the size of your triangle when you do that. Yeah, getting a small triangle is really happy if you get a small triangle. Um, yeah, in reality, getting three objects that are like that is uh, very difficult. Uh, the smaller the triangle, the more accurate the fix. You're within the triangles, which you know. So we're going to do one now. Um, okay, another problem at 2155, turning JDM. I hope this one's not so close to shore and <laughs> so small. Uh, we'll see. Using your hand bearing compass, you take a bearing on Miller Tower and bearing a 257 magnet. Okay. They then took a bearing to a buoy um, and get a reading of 319. So, what's your position? So, what do we got? We've got, again, we've got two bearings here, right? This is a two bearing fix. Let's see, Marguerite? Yes. Going to get another one. I see that. <laughs> so the first thing you do is uncorrect. Uh, so I sure. Yes. Um, well, okay. This reading is magnetic in one part. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're correct. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Even if, if we were going from true to magnetic, it would be uncorrect. These were magnetic, so then I went to true, and now I'm about to take the reciprocal okay. rays. Six 
got this when we had that that uh, meeting of instructors yeah, I said I, I know that's right. That's right. I, I sent you this mm -hmm. okay and it shows by week what, what we're teaching now it has me down okay present but you're not so the PowerPoint is no, exercise, right. things like that. I have PowerPoints for each of these. Okay. Okay. So uh, right, here's the name of the PowerPoint. I guess I just want to get the PowerPoint. Right. 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 And you've got 131 on your protractor, and it's going through the Right. And then we put a circle around that. Oh, is that around the intersection? Around the intersection. So I'm going to do one of those. Okay. I'll go for it. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to break this thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then So did you get 1.1 on your interpolator?
Looks like they have to change the course because we're going to buy that. There it is. 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 In this situation, okay. we've got a bearing to Miller Tower. It's 257 magnetic, right? And we want to plot that from Miller Tower. So we want the reciprocal. Uh, some people, so first, they make it true. So this is magnetic. So true, you subtract 8. Okay, and you get what? Uh, 249 true. And then you get the reciprocal. So you subtract 180 and you get 69 true, okay? So we'll plot that, and then for the second bearing, it's from the North Buoy, and there we have a reading of 319 magnetic, okay? And again, subtract eight to get the true, so that would be 311 true, and then you subtract 180, right? And you get what, 111, 131, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 131 <coughs> true. All right, so those are the two line of positions you're going to plot. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And mm. you're out here. Okay. <coughs> and that gives you. How are we going? Are you all close? Yep. I had a point one. Awesome. No. Great. But You're all close. We didn't yeah. figure out the mm -hmm. reciprocal. We did it without minus. Yeah, yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah, we did too. Yeah, okay. You, you can. You just extend the line in the other mm -hmm. direction. Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> a lot of flow trackers actually show the reciprocal yeah. at the bot yeah. underneath the yeah. top circle. Right. And and so, so, the, so you can yeah. leave the reciprocal yeah. right off without oh. doing the math. Oh, so that's no fun. We're going to quick class here. 
You guys all pick this up. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, you're going like this, but you're standing here looking at Okay. All right, so this is a uh, discussion, right? The two previous problems, which fix was more accurate and why? Three people. Three, three. 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 three lines? Right? No, 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 they're both two. Whatever one's closest to 90 degrees, it's the first one. Okay, one. so this one, right? Uh, the, the second one here. <clears throat> Problem two, okay, was Miller Tower and the um, North Buoy, okay, and they're, eh, that angle's probably about 75 degrees, something like that, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that's problem two, and then back in problem one, all right, we were off, okay, the, the, uh, the mass, Okay, mm -hmm. this, this mass and right. the Miller Tower, and those are pretty darn close to 90 degrees, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so this first one's more accurate for two reasons, right? One is that the angle is better, okay? The second is that those are two stationary points, right? Right. The other one had a buoy which could be moving around a bit. Mm -hmm. So for both reasons, this first one's more accurate. <clears throat> but you may not have a choice when you're out there, right? Right, you're just, yeah. Whatever, whatever, yeah. You know, you've got to find two things that you can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have copies of these sample problems anywhere, so we can go redo them? Um, we don't uh, know. Um, I could send you a copy of the presentation. I'm going to do that. Um, you can that. Just send me a note. I'll send you a copy of the presentation. Okay. Okay. Now, I leave town in the morning and don't go back till Monday. Afternoon, so you might not get it until I get back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Or maybe I can even do it tonight before I leave. To talk. Okay. Another, another type of uh, fix is what they call an estimated position. All right. Now, an estimated position um, is not as accurate as uh, the two or three bearing fixes. Okay. But it's when you only see one object. Okay. When you see one object out there, okay, you know, and you want to try and figure out where you are, they call it an estimated position. So you're gonna again you're gonna draw a line, a bearing line, right, from the thing you saw. Okay, in this case a lighthouse. Right? And this is your course line. And on your course line, you have your, uh, your DR points, right? Um, and so at 1445, your dead reckoning point is here. And at 1445, when you took the bearing, it came here. So you're someplace between here and here, OK? on this line. You gotta be on this line because that was your bearing, right? You took a bearing, you're on that line. Okay. But you don't know how far out you are. You don't know, you know, you don't know if you're out here or you're over here. Right? So the estimate based on your course line and the best <coughs> the, the closest is a right angle um, to your DR. That's where this line is closest to your DR. Is a is a is a 90 degree uh, right angle from the bearing line. So our estimate is that we're here, where that little square is. Okay. Yeah. So in my day job, I've done hundreds of these, and I've never done a perpendicular line. Would you explain the rationale, as, as opposed to in my other job, I would use the DR course and the LOP in the intersection of those for our EP. So you would have done it here. Yep. So why did we draw that 90 degree line and do this? This is, this is where the bearing line is closest to your DR point. So the rationale is because it's the closest that you yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where it's closest. 
Yeah, why wouldn't it be X marks the spot? Right. That's <laughs> All right. It, okay, we only know two things, right? We know we're on this line, and we know we're somewhere on this line, okay? But where we think we are on this line is here, not up here, because that's our DR. We think we're here. But our bearing says, no, 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 we're on this line. So the closest this point is to this line is there. Okay, this is, this is further from our DR. The, the other reason that this may differ from Lee's professional experience, it seems to me, is that we know that our course line is our, our plotted course, our projected course. There's a lot of things that can take us off that course line. In, in point of fact, on the water, we're going to have set of waves and wind, we're going to have drift, we're going to have different things, maybe bad steerage. Things take us off that line. When you, in your professional job, Lee, you know you're on that course. You know from your instruments, and, and, and you don't have quite as much of that set and drift. I'm just guessing that might be the reason that it's possible for a pilot like you to like do it differently. We're going 100 times faster. Okay, that's fine. I'll do the exercise. Just yeah, don't yeah. quite follow the rationale. Yeah. Right. That, that was the rationale. This is the closest point to where you think you are on your DR. Okay. So it's the closest that both of those come together. All right. So that's called an estimated position. We aren't going to do a problem with this. It's just uh, <laughs> 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 uh, forget everything. All right. Okay. An another kind of uh, of a line of position is, is a range. All right. And we're out on the water. We will we will do a, we will use a range. Okay. Uh, there are places where um, there are two um, fixed objects. Okay. In a row that you can line up. And you know, um, you know, like by looking at them, you know if you're on that line, okay, you are at a certain course, right? Page 28 shows it. So you want to know. Um, it, this is to help you. Oftentimes, these are to help you get into a channel, mm -hmm. okay, where you've got to be very careful and go straight. If you're off to one side or the other, there's hazards. So they shall put in two Range marks. two uh, marks. Okay, one will be lower than the other, like here, mm -hmm. so that you can see both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you can follow by going straight at them. You can go straight in and miss the hazards. Okay, that's what ranges are used for. Right. They help you go directly in. Um, <laughs> There's an example of one. Uh, we use this one when um, this is on your chart um, up at uh, Metro Beach. Okay, up near uh, well, you can see a point of land comes out north of JBM. You can see a point of land comes out like that. That's Metro Beach. Okay, and to get into this uh, Black Creek uh, channel, which we will do. Okay, second Saturday. Uh, or Sunday, the second uh, weekend that you're out there, we're going to sail into here, okay? And there's two light, uh, yeah, two marks here, all right, to help guide you in. And on your chart, it will show you what that course is, okay? Do you see it? Mm -hmm. I don't see it on my chart. I see the line, but I don't see the heading. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not labeled on the chart. Yeah, you see the line? Yeah. Okay, and then there's two little, there's two little uh, lights to show you. It doesn't say 297 on the line. No, it doesn't, does it? No. It should, but it doesn't. Should we write it down? Sure, write it down. Yeah. Write it down, yeah. 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 Write it down and then you, you'll have it in your car when you go back to look at the chart. <laughs> All right. So, and we we do this, okay? We sail up to, we'll sail up to one pH, up to the here. All right, and then we'll, you know, coming from JBM, we'll sail up to here, then we'll turn, and we'll head in. 
okay? And at some point, we'll see those. Uh, they're very hard to see. Okay, they're not real helpful in this situation. I mean, they should be, but they're not. There's trees. There's so much stuff on that shore. Finding these is a pain. But we will try and find them and follow them in. Okay. And as you can see, it's pretty shallow, both to the left, you know, yes. three feet, <laughs> and um, to the right, there's some shallow areas as well. Okay. So we want to we want to kind of follow that in. What's our graph? What's our graph? Four feet. So that's a range. All right, another another uh, kind of a bearing that we use is a danger bearing. All right, and that's used. Um, it's used to divide a safe area from an unsafe area. Right, um, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, one side of the bearing is will be safe, and the other side will be dangerous. I'm going to, uh, I think it's, some, I know we're, we're running long here, but I'm going to try and finish this up before we stop. Here's an example of a danger bear, right? There's, there's a light, okay? And on this bearing to that light, if you're on this side of it, there's hazards. If you're on this side, it's safe, okay? So first, you select an object like the lighthouse. Right, the jaw bearing from that object tangent to the danger, that's here, okay. And then you label it, and you label it to say either not more than or not less than. And what that means is, all right, in this case, the bearing, uh, it says is 318. So that's the bearing there. And it says then um, it's unsafe if you're down here, right? These two are unsafe, and it's safe if you're up here, right? So you don't want to be more than 318. And I always have to think about that. Is it more than or less than, okay? That, and so what I think of is I think, okay, if I was coming in this way, horizontally, I'm gonna chart right across, that would be 270, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you know, your, your compass 270, zero, mm -hmm. 180, and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On a compass rose, okay, mm -hmm. this is 270, right? This is zero, this is 180, and this is 90, right? So if I'm coming in here, I'm coming in 270, which is less than 318, right? So, I know if I'm less than 318, I'm in safe water. If I'm more than 318, okay, then I'm in, da I'm in dangerous waters. Okay. That's how a danger bearing works. So in this case, it's not less than? Uh, it's not, you don't want to be more than 318. If you're less, you're safe. If you're more, you're in danger. Okay. If I'm coming in, mm -hmm. you know, at 350, right, I'm over here. In fact, I'm at, if I'm at 325, I'm over here. I'm going to come right across those. Okay. So I want to be less than 318. Like I said, the only way I, I can remember which is less and more is is I'll go to some safe, obvious, in this case, if I'm coming this way, it's 270, right? And that's less than 318. So anything less than 318 is in safe water. Anything more than 318 is going to be in dangerous water. Not more than, NMT, not more than 318. Where do you label it? Uh, Anywhere on the way? Yeah, I don't know. On the top, it shows on the top of the line on page 32. Uh, yeah, where does it show it? It just, on page 32, bold letters, 
N M T. So I would put it here. Yeah, yep. that's what it shows. Right. Three eighteen M. Magnetic. Yeah. And remember, your danger bearing is all, is always the bearing from your vessel to the object. So if if mm -hmm. you're if you're plotting this or you're looking at it and you're going from the object to your vessel, you're then going to be marking the reciprocal to determine what your danger bearing is. So it's the bearings are always from the vessel to the object. Not the other. The danger bearing. The object in this oh, case the bearing. tower. Any bearing is always from oh. your vessel to the object. It's to the tower in this case, not the shoulder, right? That's what you're saying. It's, it's the, the harbor light. To the, the light. light in this mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say <coughs> that. To the light. Danger mm -hmm. zone. That is if a gust of wind comes up. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's what happens when you have a current. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Not more than 318 now. All right. One, one other thing we do is you can put an X where you're not supposed to be and then figure that out and follow the edge of the, the mount over. Mm -hmm. Say again, but X is on each side. Mm -hmm. Oh. You put X oh, where you yeah. aren't supposed to be and that leads you right into not more than. So you might put some X's over here? And then figure, and I like what Paul said about thinking about the circle with 0, 180, mm -hmm. the direction, 90, mm -hmm. and 270, because that's very helpful to keep that in mind. That will mm -hmm. also come in very good when you do reciprocals, because you're most likely to put the wrong, the opposite direction once you use the reciprocal. And you have to be careful about that. You've got to think about which direction you're going. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have a problem for danger bearings, okay? You're returning home to JBM after visiting friends at Metro Beach. You want to be sure to miss the Gulfner Point shore. To do this, set up a danger bearing and label it with the safe course to return to the marina. Use, basically they give you a hint, use the Miller Tower as that point that you're putting your bearings on. Right? So where is Metro so, Beach? All right, here's the Gulfner point. Here's the Gulfner shoal that we want to miss. So we want to make sure that we sail inside here, not right at it. Okay, we don't want to hit it. And where is Metro Beach? Right, we're coming from. Really we're coming from up here. Oh, I see. Coming from I Metro see Beach. I see. We're coming down this way. I see. All right. If I was coming due south, I'd be headed 180, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I if I headed what what bearing to Miller Tower okay, is going to allow me to be in safe water versus possibly coming in across the shoal? Yeah. I don't want to come in across the shoal. Right. So. All right, so if I come in here, this way, to Miller Tower, here's Miller Tower. If I'm heading towards Miller Tower here, this is safe, right? Yeah. Okay, if I was to head to Miller Tower from here, but that wouldn't make sense. That would be bad. That wouldn't make sense for Metropolitan yeah. Beach. Well, we could be coming this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be bad. I was going to say. That would be bad. Yes, this would be bad. But, but I draw a direct line from Metro Beach to Miller Tower, and you miss the shoals. <laughs> right, but that's not a danger barrier. I see. We're, we're just trying to draw a danger barrier. I see. Yeah. Very. So okay, so you want to just kind of skirt the I know. <laughs> so we'll have to okay, so, so uncorrect. So, yeah. so, yeah. Because we're, we're drawing truth. Because we have to uncorrect to label the term. Uh, so, for example, this one here, I'm calculating. Yeah, it's going to be true. So, I want to mark it. Magnetic. magnetic. 
Yes. All right. Yes. While you're doing this problem, I'll tell you what. We're going to have a break until eight o'clock. So while we're doing this problem, also take a break. It's a break, right? I don't like your definition of break. All right, you take a break now, too, so 8 o'clock. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost on top of another line. That, that, Okay, so, so we just I, have to I am. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm doing this again. I'm not actually just I'm not happy. Yeah, I'm not really drawing a line. I'm doing a meridian. Okay, so, so right, so, so, this, so I'm assuming that this is my danger bearing. Okay, so I'm putting this on my danger. Yes, yeah, so I'm going so I am at like I'm, I'm at, well, but if I'm coming from this direction, coming down here, then that's going to be nice. 90, 180, 180, it's going to be between 180 and 278. Right. Okay, so this is the direction that the boat is moving. Right, because he's coming from this is zero, coming from here. Right, so this is going to be 180, so this is between 180 and 278. Oh, it's still recording. Really? It's not. Somewhere between zero 